This is AFC RDTV, and the final scoreline today here at Hayden Road, AFC Russian Diamonds 1, Bromsgrove Sporting 1. The man of the match for Diamonds is Miguel Nagua. Uh, Miguel, uh, this was a much-needed uh, result for Diamonds to at least get a point from a game. Yeah, um, we've had a few games now where we've not really picked up many points, so it felt good to get a few points today. Um, I felt like we could have grabbed, probably could have grabbed three, especially in the second half, but we'll just p um, pick up on that and go again next week. Oh, of course. Well, uh, I thought Diamond's best uh, patches in the first half were, uh, you know, uh, maybe midway through the first half and especially nearer halftime. Yeah. But it was a shame to give up a goal so early in only the sixth minute, Ryan Edmonds. Yeah. Um, what did you make of that? Yeah, it's frustrating to concede early because it straight away puts us on the back foot and at that point we have to try to get two back. So we, I think we, we worked hard in the first half to keep it at 1-0. And then in the second half, I think after certain events in the match, they went down to ten. We really started to get a foot on the game, foot on the game, and and we started dominating. Yeah. And I, I think we could have maybe grabbed three points towards well, the end. Definitely, uh, Diamond, you kept your composure, and in the uh, second half, a lot of talking points. I lost track of all the yellow cards. Bob's Grove Sporting yeah. got, I think, something like six or seven yellows all total in the match, yeah. including two for Kieran Dawes. His second yellow in the 51st minute, of course, uh, equaled a red card, and uh, Diamonds are playing a man up, a man advantage for the rest of the game. That certainly yeah, I helped. Think, I think especially when they went down to ten men, it, was, it made the game, it opened up the game a bit more, and we started to get a bit more success in wider areas because we just we kind of just forced them in their own half and kept them there for pretty much the whole second half and the diamonds you get an all-important equalizer in the 64th minute evangelos uh, gets the ball across the plane as such as maybe a delayed reaction but uh, yeah a very important goal for diamonds there yeah very important um it it was kind of weird because no one really knew what was going on so we kind of just we, no one knew whether it was a goal or the referee disallowed it and uh, there was everyone surrounding the linesman and we were all kind of confused but when we found out it was a goal we just we thought now we've got a foot in the game so we're in a celebratory mood and yeah. uh, so that one went our way to uh, equalize at 1-1 for the rest of the game uh, you had uh, during the match uh, at least two really great shots on goal uh, just barely inches over the crossbar I was hoping third time would be a charm yeah I was a bit frustrated I didn't manage to uh, get on the score sheet because I felt like um, the chances I had were really good chances that were created and I probably should have finished them so yeah well very good well it's been uh, it's been an interesting season so far a managerial change but uh, I think uh, the players are showing a uh, dedication commitment and yeah. uh, hopefully uh, we'll turn this thing around uh, begin uh, next game of course will be uh, another home match Hayden Road yeah. Kings Langley early thoughts yeah uh, we're going to obviously go into that game and try and give a hundred percent and make sure that we do everything we can to come out with three points. Well, very good, Miggy. Cheers. Thanks for your time. Thank Cheers. you. Well, Richard, it was always going to be a tight game between two struggling sides, but is there an overriding feeling of frustration with Bromsgrove being down to 10 for so long we couldn't go on to win the game? Yeah, I felt we, we could have, uh, maybe should have won the game. Lots of chances, some really good clear-cut chances that the guys created. Um, I think we need to look at our final delivery and also about execution in the box and we'll look on that this week. You made three changes to the side today but went with more of the same system that we've seen in recent weeks. Can you tell us a little bit more about your approach to the game? Yeah we, we always assess what the opposition is doing but we're looking at our, how we play and how we can actually uh, succeed and actually get goals. Um, so similar type of system but we did tweak it. We brought some different people in and that was done on purpose. It was a tough start to the game with Bromsgrove taking the lead so early on. What was the mindset at that point? It was a very tough first half. Um, yeah, it was a very tough first half. 
we didn't really execute what we wanted to do. We didn't see what we planned to do. Um, it was a very poor first half from my point of view, um, but it was a very important half-time team talk that we did. I suppose you'll feel a little bit aggrieved that the disallowed goal was given. We've heard it was onside, but of course we'll have to look at it back. But you alluded to your half-time team talk there. What, what did you say to the players at the break? Yeah, it was, it was very, um, yeah, very straightforward from what we wanted to achieve. Um, we, we tweaked a, f a couple of things, but we actually just instilled the, the belief of what we wanted to achieve and actually be brave and get on the ball and actually use the ball. So it was really pleasing to see, and I was proud of the reaction, proud of how they played second half. My statement to them now is, can we do that for 90 and not 45? Yeah, it was a much better second half. <clears throat> Obviously, it was helped by the red card, uh, but we did have plenty of the ball, made a few chances. Do you feel that we created enough, given the, how, you know, the numerical advantage that we had? Yeah, they, they sat deep. They made it difficult for us, so it was always going to be difficult to try and create it. But I thought we actually did create quite a few chances. Miguel down the left, particularly. You know, Charles, uh, Charlie with his, his crosses were very good. Getting in the box, we just need to look at how we execute and finish those. I know managers don't tend to single out players, but there were a couple of really good performances today. Obviously, Miguel getting mad of the match down that left-hand side. And a word for Evan as well, getting his first goal for the club and, and defending really well at the back. Yeah, Evan, great goal, great finish. Uh, some really tireless defending there when needed to, uh, particularly second half. I thought Hicksy as well, second half, really rose to the challenge. I gave him a challenge to do second half and he's absolutely smashed it. So um, some really good performances across the team. Second half, really proud of it first half not proud of that at all we made some changes in the second half that, that had good impact in the game jack connor coming on uh, jensen cooper as well how do you feel those guys got on and helped help the team yeah i thought jack was uh, excellent uh, when he came on same as at leaston he gave us an extra dimension uh, a lot of good runs behind um jensen as well had that opportunity at the far post to win it um so he's doing some really good runs at the back we need to work in training as to how we finish those yeah, we perhaps didn't create as many chances as we would have liked, especially after they went down to 10 men. Do you feel like that's more of a, perhaps a lack of quality, maybe maybe something else? I think we need to focus on the training pitch uh, and help the guys with their decision making and what they're doing. They've got the quality. It's about getting them working together and gelling together. We've had, I think, about six training sessions in five games. So, you know, we're looking to a couple of good training sessions this week and uh, we'll build on today's result. You know, it, it's 1-1, one, one, it's a draw. We'll build on this for next week at King's Landing. Yeah, you mentioned the Kings only game. We've got a nice week to prepare for it now because we've had quite a few Tuesday games recently, so it'd be nice to have that week to prepare. It's going to be another big game against another team who are struggling like we are, but at home in front of the fans, I'm sure you'll, you know, you'll agree, we've got a chance. Oh, absolutely. It was really good to see the fans cheering us on, particularly second half when we're, we're you know, going for it. it. It did lift the guys. They kept on going. Some tired legs there because obviously we've been to Leaston, fell off the, the end of the world going to Leaston on Tuesday night. So certainly some tired legs. We'll, we'll freshen those up this week. Uh, we'll have some good training sessions. We look forward to next Saturday. Absolutely. Well, thanks for your time, Richard. We'll see you again next week. Thanks. I don't need love.